The Astounding Broccoli Boy by Frank Cottrell Boyce Who would win in a fight between a hippo and a freezer? Somewhere in the trees behind me a twig snapped. Somewhere ahead of me something rustled in the leaves. Somewhere on the path something was walking towards us with heavy squelchy steps. All these sounds seemed really loud. None of them was loud enough to wake Tommy Lee. Then there was another sound. The big, mucousy snores of Tommy Lee. Snores that shook the little wooden house and echoed off the trees. Snores you could hear for miles around. I tried to shush him. I held his nose to try and make him stop. I was still holding his nostrils together when the snore came again. It wasn't coming from Tommy Lee. It came out of the shadows right in front of me. It came again. This time I could see what was making it. Something big and pale and fleshy and wet, floating in the air. A watery ghost. It disappeared, leaving a horrible compost whiff behind. It appeared again, closer. Now I could see what it was. It wasn't a ghost. I shook Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee, I said. Did you let any of the other animals out? Tommy Lee grunted. The reason I ask, I explained, is that there is a hippopotamus looking right at us. A hippopotamus can run at 40 kilometres an hour. I know this because that's exactly what it did. I definitely teleported again, because I was somehow instantly back inside the little wooden hut with the freezer full of ice creams. The hot wall splintered. The hippo's head cannonballed through it. Compost smell bombed the room. I was outside again. The back end of the hippo was out in the moonlight, steam shovel feet pushing the gravel. Its front end was jammed into the shattered remains of the hut. The hippo was fighting the hut. The hut was fighting the hippo. Falling planks smacked its back. The fridge full of drinks crashed across its head. The hippo whirled around, shoving the freezer, bursting its walls. Trampled drinks cans exploded under its feet. Fanta fountains fizzed in its face. It must have liked them because some truly horrible slurping noises were coming from inside the ruins of the hut. At least I now know who would win in a fight between a hippo and a sweets kiosk. Tommy Lee finally stood up. He stood up, but he didn't wake up. He playmobiled off down the footpath. I went after him and we walked back to the hospital. The walk home was the most unforgettable journey of my entire life. First of all, it took ages because we were miles away. Tommy Lee doesn't remember a thing about it. He doesn't remember the two gorillas that shambled past us on their mighty knuckles, doesn't recall the little antelopes bouncing by so close their speed breezed our cheeks. He can't even remember the leopard that fell into step with us and trotted along next to us, its tongue hanging out, its breath drumming and smoking. He just kept walking. Maybe it was because he couldn't see them that I survived. If I hadn't been walking next to him, I would have panicked and tried to leg it, and the gorillas and leopards would have hunted me down and beaten me, or eaten me. Instead we got safely back to the hospital, climbed into the window cleaner's cradle, and winched ourselves back to bed.